The Hawker Sidley Nimrod was a maritime patrol aircraft developed and operated by the United Kingdom. It was an extensive modification of the de Havilland Comet, the world's first operational jet airliner. It was originally designed by de Havilland's successor firm, Hawker Sidley. Further development and maintenance work was undertaken by Hawker Sidley's own successor companies, British Aerospace and BAE Systems, respectively. Designed in response to a requirement issued by the Royal Air Force to replace its fleet of aging of O'Shackletons, the Nimrod MR1-MR2S were primarily fixed-wing aerial platforms for anti-submarine warfare operations. Secondary roles included maritime surveillance and anti-surface warfare. It served from the early 1970s until March 2010. The intended replacement was to be extensively rebuilt Nimrod MR2S, designated Nimrod MRA4. However due to considerable delays, repeated cost overruns, and financial cutbacks, the development of the MRA4 was abandoned in 2010. In addition to the three maritime reconnaissance variants, two further Nimrod types were developed. The RAF operated a small number of the Nimrod R1, an electronic intelligence gathering variant. A dedicated airborne early warning platform, the Nimrod AW3 was in development from late 1970s to the mid 1980s. However, much like the MRA4, considerable problems were encountered in development and thus the project was cancelled in 1986 in favor of an off the shelf solution in the Boeing E3 Century. All Nimrod variants had been retired by mid-2011. Development equals MR1 equals, on June 4, 1964, the British government issued Air Staff Requirement 381 to replace the Avro Shackleton. Such a replacement was necessitated by the rapidly approaching fatigue life limits of the RAF's existing Shackleton fleet. A great deal of interest in the requirement was received from both British and foreign manufacturers. Offered aircraft including the Lockheed P-3 Orion, the Breguet Atlantic and derivatives of the Hawker Sidley Trident, BAC-111, Vickers VC-10 and de Havilland Comet. On February 2, 1965, British Prime Minister Harold Wilson announced the intention to order Hawker Sidley's maritime patrol version of the Comet, the HS-801. The Nimrod design was based on that of the Comet 4 civil airliner which had reached the end of its commercial life. The Comet's turbojet engines were replaced by Rolls-Royce Spey turbofans for better fuel efficiency, particularly at the low altitudes required for maritime patrol. Major fuselage changes were made, including an internal weapons bay, an extended nose for radar, a new tail with electronic warfare sensors mounted in a bulky fairing, and a MAD boom. After the first flight in May 1967, the RAF ordered a total of 46 Nimrod MR1S. The first example entered service in October 1969. A total of five squadrons using the type were established. Four were permanently based in the UK and a fifth was initially based in Malta. Equals a one equals, three Nimrod aircraft were adapted for the signals intelligence role, replacing the Comet C2S and Canberra's of No. 51 Squadron in May 1974. The R1 was visually distinguished from the MR2 by the lack of a MAD boom. It was fitted with an array of rotating dish aerials in the aircraft's bomb bay, with further dish aerials in the tail cone and at the front of the wing mounted fuel tanks. It had a flight crew of four and up to 25 crew operating the SIGINT equipment. Only since the end of the Cold War has the role of the aircraft been officially acknowledged. They were once described as radar calibration aircraft. The R1S have not suffered the same rate of fatigue and corrosion as the MR2S. One R1 was lost in a flying accident since the type's introduction. This occurred in May 1995 during a flight test after major servicing, at RAF Kinloss. To replace this aircraft an MR2 was selected for conversion to a 1 standard, and entered service in December 1996. The Nimrod R1 was based initially at RAF Whiton, Cambridgeshire, and later at RAF Waddington in Lincolnshire, England, and flown by 51 SQN. The two remaining Nimrod R1S were originally planned to be retired at the end of March 2011, but operational requirements forced the RAF to deploy one to RAF Ecroterry, 
Cyprus on March 16 in support of Operation Elemi. The last flight of the type was on June 28, 2011 from RAF Waddington, in the presence of the Chief of the Air Staff, ACM Sir Stephen Dalton. 15249, the former MR2, is now on display at the RAF Museum Cusford, West Midlands. The R1 is being replaced by three Boeing RC-135W rivet joint aircraft, acquired under the Air Seeker project. The first aircraft was delivered in late 2013. Equals MR2 equals. Starting in 1975, 35 aircraft were upgraded to MR2 standard, being re-delivered from August 1979. The upgrade included extensive modernization of the aircraft's electronic suite. Changes included the replacement of the obsolete ASVMK-21 radar used by the Shackleton and Nimrod MR1 with the new MEZAR quarter radar, a new acoustic processor capable of handling more modern Sonoba use, a new mission data recorder and a new electronic support measures which included new pods on the wingtips. Provision for in-flight refueling was introduced during the Falklands War as well as hard points to allow the Nimrod to carry the AIM-9 Sidewinder missile to counter enemy Argentine Air Force maritime surveillance aircraft. In preparation for operations in the Gulf War theater, several MR-2S were fitted with new communications and ECM equipment to deal with anticipated threats. At the time these modified aircraft were given the designation MR-2P, GM. The Nimrod MR-2 carried out three main roles a Euro anti-submarine warfare, anti-surface unit warfare and search and rescue. Its extended range enabled the crew to monitor maritime areas far to the north of Iceland and up to 4,000 kilometers out into the western Atlantic. With air-to-air -air refueling, range and endurance was greatly extended. The crew consisted of two pilots and one flight engineer, two navigators, one air electronics officer the Sonoboy sensor team of two weapon system operators and four weapon system operators to manage passive and active electronic warfare systems. Until 1992, the Nimrod MR2 was based at RAF Canlos in Scotland, and RAF St. Maugan in Cornwall squadrons. Following options for change, 42 Squadron was disbanded and its number reassigned to 38, R, Squadron. The Nimrod MR2 aircraft was withdrawn on March 31, 2010, a year earlier than planned, for financial reasons. The last official flight of a Nimrod MR2 took place on May 26, 2010, with XV-229 flying from RAF Canlos to Kent International Airport to be used as an evacuation training airframe at the nearby MOD Defense Fire Training and Development Center. Equals AW3 equals in the mid-1970s a modified Nimrod was proposed for the airborne early warning mission a Euro again as a replacement for the Lancaster-derived, piston-engine Shackleton AEW-2. Eleven existing Nimrod airframes were to be converted by British Aerospace at the former Evo plant at Woodford to house the GEC Marconi radars in a bulbous nose and tail. The Nimrod AW-3 project was plagued by cost overruns and problems with the GEC 4080M computer used. Eventually, the mod recognized that the cost of developing the radar system to achieve the required level of performance was prohibitive and the probability of success very uncertain, and in December 1986 the project was cancelled. The RAF eventually received seven Boeing E-3 Sentry aircraft instead. Equals MRA-4 equals. The Nimrod MRA-4 was intended to replace the capability provided by the MR-2. It was essentially a new aircraft, with current generation Rolls-Royce BR710 turbofan engines, a new larger wing, and fully refurbished fuselage. However the project was subject to delays, cost overruns, and contract renegotiations. The type had been originally intended to enter service in 2003. The MRA-4 was cancelled in 2010 as a result of the Strategic Defense and Security Review at which point it was a £789 million over budget and nine years late. The development airframes were also scrapped. The cancellation of the MRA-4 marked an abortive end of the Nimrod's era. The functions it provided were largely abandoned leading to a significant UK capability gap. A few functions were dispersed to other assets including the use of unmanned aerial vehicles to conduct limited maritime surveillance. 
Design. Equals overview equals, the Nimrod was the first jet-powered maritime patrol aircraft to enter service, being powered by the Rolls-Royce Spade turbofan engine. Aircraft in this role have been commonly propelled by piston or turboprop power plants instead to maximize fuel economy and enable maximum patrol time on station. Advantages of the Nimrod's turbofan engines included greater speed and altitude capabilities, it was also more capable of evading detection methods by submarines, whereas propeller-driven aircraft are more detectable underwater to standard acoustic sensors. In flight, the Nimrods had a flight endurance of 10 hours without aerial refueling. The MR-2S was later fitted to receive mid-air refueling in response to demands in the Falklands War. At the start of a patrol mission all four engines would normally be running, but as the aircraft's weight was reduced by the consumption of inboard fuel up to two engines could be intentionally shut down, allowing the remaining engines to be operated in a more efficient manner. Instead of relying on ram air to restart an inactive engine, compressor air could be crossfed from a live engine to a starter turbine. The crossfeed duct was later discovered to be a potential fire hazard. Similarly, the two hydraulic systems on board were designed to be powered by the two inner engines that would always be running. Electrical generation was designed to far exceed the consumption of existing equipment to accommodate additional systems installed over the Nimrod's operational service. The standard Nimrod fleet carried out three basic operational roles during their RAF service. Anti-submarine warfare duties typically involved surveillance over an allocated area of the North Atlantic to detect the presence of Soviet submarines in that area and to track their movements. In the event of war, reconnaissance information gathered during these patrols would be shared with other Allied aircraft to enable coordinated strikes at both submarines and surface targets. Search and rescue missions were another important duty of the RAF's Nimrod fleet, operating under the Air Rescue Coordination Center at RAF Kinloss, and were a common sight in both military and civil maritime incidents. Throughout the Nimrod's operational life, a minimum of one aircraft was being held in a state of readiness to respond to SAR demands at all times. Equals avionics equals. The Nimrod featured a large crew of up to 25 personnel, although a typical crew numbered roughly 12 members, most of which operated the various inboard sensor suites and specialist detection equipment. A significant proportion of the inboard sensor equipment was housed outside the pressure shell inside the Nimrod's distinctive pannier lower fuselage. Sensor systems included radar, sonar, and the magnetic anomaly detector. A sniffer could detect exhaust fumes from diesel submarines as well. The Nimrod and its detection capabilities was an important component of Britain's military defence during the height of the Cold War. The Nimrod's navigational functions were computerised, and were managed from a central tactical compartment housed in the Ford cabin. Various aircraft functions such as weapons control and information from sensors such as the large forward Doppler radar were displayed and controlled at the tactical station. The flight systems and autopilot could be directly controlled by navigator stations in the tactical compartment, giving the navigator nearly complete aircraft control. The navigational systems comprised digital, analog, and electromechanical elements. The computers were directly integrated with most of the Nimrod's guidance systems such as the air data computer, astro compass, inertial guidance and Doppler radar. Navigation information could also be manually input by the operators. Upon its introduction to service, the Nimrod was hailed as possessing advanced electronic equipment such as inboard digital computers. The increased capability of these electronic systems allowed the RAF's fleet of 46 Nimrod aircraft to provide equal coverage to that of a larger fleet of retiring of O'Shackleton's. The design philosophy of these computerized systems was that of a man machine partnership. While board computers performed much of the data sift and analysis processes, decisions and actions on the basis of that data remained in the operator's hands. To support the Nimrod's anticipated long lifespan, board computers were designed to be capable of integrating with various new components, systems, and sensors that could be added in future upgrades. After a mission, gathered information could be extracted for review purposes and for further analysis equals armaments and equipment equals, the Nimrod featured a sizable bomb bay in which, 
in addition to armaments such as torpedoes and missiles, could be housed a wide variety of specialist equipment for many purposes, such as up to 150 sonoboys for ASW purposes or multiple air-deployed dinghies and droppable survival packs such as Lindum gear for SAR missions. Additional fuel tanks and cargo could also be carried in the bomb bay during ferrying flights. Other armaments equipable in the bomb bay include mines, bombs, and nuclear depth charges. Later munitions included the Stingray torpedo and Harpoon missile for increased capabilities. The Nimrod could also be fitted with two detachable pylons mounted underneath the wings to be used with missiles such as the Martel. Two specialized pylons were later added to enable the equipping of Sidewinder missiles, used for self-defense purposes from hostile aircraft. A powerful remote-controlled searchlight was installed underneath the starboard wing for SAR operations. For reconnaissance missions, the aircraft was also equipped with a pair of downward-facing cameras suited to low- and high-altitude photography. In later years a newer electro-optical camera system was installed for greater imaging quality. Various new ECMs and electronic support systems were retrofitted onto the Nimrod fleet in response to new challenges and to increase the type's defensive capabilities. Additional equipment also provided more effective means of identification and communication. A number of modifications were introduced during the 1991 Gulf War. A small number of MR2S were fitted with improved Link 11 data links. New defensive ECM equipment including the first operational use of a towed radar decoy, and a forward-looking infrared turret under the starboard wing. Operational history equals Introduction to service equals, The Nimrod first entered squadron service with the RAF at RAF Street Maugan in October 1969. These initial aircraft, designated as Nimrod MR1, were intended as a stopgap measure and thus were initially equipped with many of the same sensors and equipment as the Shackletons they were supplementing. While some improvements were implemented on the MR-1 fleet to enhance their detection capabilities, the improved Nimrod MR-2 variant entered service in August 1979 following a lengthy development process. The majority of the Nimrod fleet operated from RAF Kinloss. Operationally, each active Nimrod would form a single piece of a complex submarine detection and monitoring mission. An emphasis on real-time intelligence sharing was paramount to these operations. Upon detecting a submarine, Nimrod air crews would inform Royal Navy frigates and other NATO-aligned vessels to pursuit in an effort to continuously monitor Soviet submarines. The safeguarding of the Royal Navy's Resolution-class ballistic missile submarines which were the launch platform for Britain's nuclear deterrent, was viewed as being of the utmost priority. Equals Falklands War equals, Nimrods were first deployed to Wide Awake Airfield on Ascension Island on April 5, 1982, the type at first being used to fly local patrols around Ascension to guard against potential Argentine attacks, and to escort the British task forces it sailed south towards the Falklands, with Nimrods also being used to provide search and rescue as well as communications relay support of the Operation Black Buck bombing raids by Avro Vulcans. As the task force neared what would become the combat theater and the threat from Argentine submarines rose, the more capable Nimrod MR-2S took on operations initially performed by older Nimrod MR-1S. Aviation author Chris Chant has claimed that the Nimrod R1 also conducted electronic intelligence missions operating from punter arenas in neutral Chile. The addition of air-to-air -air refueling probes allowed operations to be carried out in the vicinity of the Falklands, while the aircraft's armament was supplemented by the addition of 1,000 pounds general-purpose bombs, BL-755 cluster bombs and AIM-9 Sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles. The use of air-to-air -air refueling allowed extremely long reconnaissance missions to be mounted, one example being a 19-hour 15-minute patrol conducted on May 15, 1982, which passed within 60 miles of the Argentine coast to confirm that Argentine surface vessels were not at sea. Another long-range flight was carried out by an MR-2 on the night of 20-May 21, covering a total of 8,453 miles the longest distance flight carried out during the Falklands War. In all, Nimrods flew 111 missions from Ascension in support of British operations during the Falklands War. Equals Gulf War equals, 
A detachment of three Nimrod MR-2S was deployed to Sibin Oman in August 1990 as a result of the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait, carrying out patrols over the Gulf of Oman and Persian Gulf. Due to the level of threats present in the Gulf theatre, operational Nimrods were quickly retrofitted with a Marconi towed active decoy. Once hostilities commenced, the Nimrod detachment, by now increased to five aircraft, concentrated on night patrols, with daylight patrols carried out by U.S. Navy Lockheed P-3 Orions. Nimrods were used to guide Westland Lynx helicopters and Grumman A-6 intruder attack aircraft against Iraqi patrol vessels, being credited with assisting in sinking or damaging 16 Iraqi vessels. After the ground offensive against Iraqi forces had ended, Britain elected to maintain an RAF presence in the region through assets such as the Nimrod and other aircraft. Nimrod A1S operated from August 1990 to March 1991 from Cyprus, providing almost continuous flying operations from the start of the ground offensive. Each A1 was retrofitted with the same Marconi towed active decoy as well as underwing chaff flare dispensers, reportedly sourced from the Tornado fleet. Equals Afghanistan and Iraq War equals, Nimrods were again deployed to the Middle East as part of the British contribution to the U.S.-led invasion of Afghanistan. Missions in this theater involved the Nimrods performing lengthy overland flights for intelligence gathering purposes. On September 2, 2006, 12 RAF personnel were killed when a Nimrod MR-2 was destroyed in a mid-air explosion following inboard fire over Afghanistan. It was the single greatest loss of British life since the Falklands War. The outbreak of the Iraq War in March 2003 saw the RAF's Nimrods being used for operations over Iraq, using the aircraft's sensors to detect hostile forces and to direct attacks by friendly coalition forces. Equals search and rescue equals, while the Nimrod MR1-MR2 was in service. One aircraft from each of the squadrons on rotation was available for search and rescue operations at one hour standby. The standby aircraft carried two sets of Lindum gear in the weapons bay. Usually one other Nimrod airborne on a training mission would also carry a set of Lindum gear. As well as using the aircraft sensors to find aircraft or ships in trouble, it was used to find survivors in the water, with a capability to search areas of up to 20,000 square miles. The main role would normally be to act as on-scene rescue coordinator to control ships, fixed-wing aircraft, and helicopters in the search area. The Nimrod was most often featured in the media in relation to its search and rescue role, such as in the reporting of major rescue incidents. In August 1979, several Nimrods were involved in locating yachting competitors during the disaster-stricken 1979 Fastnet race and coordinated with helicopters in searches for survivors from lost vessels. In March 1980, the Alexander L. Kmeland was a Norwegian semi-submersible drilling rig that capsized whilst working in the Ekofisk oil field killing 123 people. Six different Nimrods searched for survivors and took turns to provide rescue coordination involving the control of 80 surface ships and 20 British and Norwegian helicopters. In an example of the search capabilities, in September 1977 when an attempted crossing of the North Atlantic in a Zodiac inflatable dinghy went wrong, a Nimrod found the collapsed dinghy and directed a ship to it. Equals Operation Tapestry equals. The Nimrods were often used to enforce Operation Tapestry. Tapestry is a code word for the activities by ships and aircraft that protect the United Kingdom's sovereign sea areas, including the protection of fishing rights and oil and gas extraction. Following the establishment of a 200 nautical miles exclusive economic zone at the beginning of 1977 the Nimrod fleet was given the task of patrolling the 270,000 square miles area. The aircraft will locate, identify, and photograph vessels operating in the EZ. The whole area was routinely patrolled. In addition to surveillance, the aircraft will communicate with all oil and gas platforms. In 1978, an airborne Nimrod arrested an illegal fishing vessel in the western approaches and made the vessel proceed to Milford Haven for further investigation. During the Icelandic Cod Wars of 1972 and 1975 a Euro 1976, the Nimrod fleet closely cooperated with Royal Navy surface vessels to protect British civilian fishing ships. Operators, 
United Kingdom, Royal Air Force, 42 Squadron a Euro 1971 a Euro 2010, converted to the Mr. 1 from the Shackleton Mr. 3 at RAF Street Maugan, England in 1971, converted to the Mr. 2 1983 a Euro 84, withdrawn as an operational squadron in 1992 it became the operational conversion unit for the Nimrod at RAF Kinloss. The Squadron Mr. 2 aircraft were withdrawn in 2010 and the squadron prepared to train crews for the MRA-4. Following the decision to scrap the MRA-4 the squadron disbanded in 2011. 51 Squadron a Euro 1971 a Euro 2011, are ones added to fleet in 1971 at RAF Whiten, England to supplement the Comet C-2-R, which were withdrawn in 1975. Moved to RAF Waddington in 1995, the A1s were the last flying Nimrods when they were withdrawn in 2011. 120 Squadron a Euro 1970 a Euro 2010, converted to Mr. 1 from the Shackleton Mr. 3 at RAF Kinloss, Scotland in 1970, converted to the Mr. 2 1981 a Euro 82, disbanded in 2010 following the withdrawal of the Mr. 2 from service. 201 Squadron a Euro 1970 a Euro 2010. Converted to Mr. 1 from the Shackleton Mr. 3 at RAF Kinloss, Scotland in 1970, converted to the Mr. 2 1982 a Euro 83, disbanded in 2010 following the withdrawal of the Mr. 2 from service. 203 Squadron a Euro 1971 a Euro 77, converted to Mr. 1 from the Shackleton Mr. 3 at RAF Luke, Malta in 1971 disbanded in 1977 following the decision to withdraw British forces from Malta. 206 Squadron a Euro 1971 a Euro 2005, converted to Mr. 1 from the Shackleton Mr. 3 at RAF Kinloss, Scotland in 1970, converted to Mr. 2 1980 a Euro 81, disbanded in 2005. Nimrod AW Joint Trials Unit a Euro 1984 a Euro 1987, Trials unit for the AW3 based at RAF Waddington, 236 OCU a Euro 1970 a Euro 1992, formed from the Maritime Operational Training Unit at RAF Street Maugan, England in 1970 with a Mr. 1, used the shadow designation of 38 Squadron, training roll transfer to 42 Squadron in 1992. Survivors, MR2 XV226 a Euro Bruntink Hall Paradrome 15 to 31 a Euro Manchester Airport Aviation Viewing Park XV229 a Euro Manston Airport Kent used as MOD evacuation trainer XV232 a Euro Coventry Airport XV244 a Euro stored at RAF can loss for preservation XV250 a Euro Yorkshire Air Museum 15 to 54 a Euro Highland Aviation Museum XV-255 a Euro City of Norwich Aviation Museum, a 1, XV-249 a Euro RAF Museum Cusford, XW-664 a Euro East Midlands Airport. Accidents and Incidents, five Nimrods were lost in accidents during the type service with the RAF, on November 17, 1980. A Nimrod MR2 XV256 crashed near RAF can loss after three engines failed following multiple bird strikes. Both pilots were killed but the remaining crew survived. On June 3, 1984, a Nimrod MR2 XV257 stationed at RAF Street Maugan suffered extensive damage when a reconnaissance flare ignited in the bomb bay during flight. The aircraft successfully returned to base but was subsequently written off due to fire damage. There were no casualties. On May 16, 1995, XW666, a Nimrod A1 from RAF Waddington, ditched in the Murray Firth 4.5 miles from Lossiamouth after an engine caught fire during a post-servicing test flight from RAF Kinloss. The Ministry of Defence inquiry identified a number of technical issues as the cause. There were no casualties. On September 2, 1995, a Nimrod MR2 XV239 crashed into Lake Ontario while participating in the Canadian International Air Show killing the seven crew members. On September 2, 2006, a Nimrod MR2 XV-230 crashed near Kandahar in Afghanistan, 
killing all 14 servicemen on board a Euro the largest loss of UK military personnel in a single event since the Falklands War. This was the first Nimrod to enter service, originally as a MR1 but upgraded to MR2 standard in the 1980s. On February 23, 2007, the Ministry of Defence grounded all Nimrod MR2S while fuel pumps were inspected, but stressed that the inspection was not necessarily related to this crash. On November 5, 2007, XV-235 was involved in a mid-air incident over Afghanistan when the crew noticed a fuel leak during air-to-air -air refueling. After transmitting a mayday call, the crew landed the aircraft successfully. The incident came only a month before the issue of the report of a Board of Inquiry into September 2, 2006 fatal accident to XV-230 in similar circumstances. The RAF subsequently suspended air-to-air -air refueling operations for this type. Specifications Data from Wilson, General Characteristics, Crew, 13, Capacity, 24, Length, 38.65 meters, Wingspan, 35.00 m, Height, 9.14 m, Wing Area, 197.05 ma squared, Empty Weight, 39,009 kilograms, max takeoff weight, 87,090 kilograms, power plant, Fora, Rolls-Royce Spey Turbo Fans, 54.09 kilonewtons each, performance, maximum speed, 923 kilometers per hour, cruise speed, 787 kilometers per hour, range, 8,340 euro, 9,265 kilometers, Service ceiling, 13,411 m, armament, guns, none, hard points, two a, underwing pylon stations and an internal bomb bay with a capacity of 20,000 pounds and provisions to carry combinations of, rockets none, missiles, air-to-air -air missile, two a, AIM-9 Sidewinder, air-to-surface missile, Nord AS-12, Martel missile, AGM-65 Maverick, AGM-84 Harpoon, Bombs, depth charges, US own B 57 nuclear depth bombs, other, airdropped Mk 46 torpedoes, Stingray torpedoes, naval mines, Sonoboys. See also, related development, de Havilland Comet, aircraft of comparable role, configuration and era, Boeing P 8 Poseidon, Braguet Atlantic, Ilyushin Eel 38, Kawasaki XP 1, Lockheed P 3 Orion. References. Equals notes equals. Equals citations equals. Equals bibliography equals. External links. Royal Air Force. Nimrod MR2. Nimrod was actually a fine hunter. Britain a Euro unregistered trademark SMRA4 program a Euro Defense Industry Daily. Nimrod production and conversion list.